evening. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Newport News School Board for Tuesday, September 20th, 2022. On behalf of the members of the school board and the superintendent, I welcome each of you present this evening and those who are watching on TV and online. A quorum is present to transact the business of the school division. We will begin tonight's meeting with an invocation and pledge to the flag. Here to do the honors is George Smith, a senior at Warwick High School. Mr. Smith, please come forward and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is George Smith. I go to Warwick High School. I'm a senior. I aspire to be a cybersecurity major in my future, and I'm <laughs> ready to learn. Glad to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Should I start with the invocation first? Yeah. I shall start with a poem. It's Don't Quit by Turan Prasad. <clears throat> when times are hard, you might stop for a bit, but it's not over until you quit. On a river's bridge, failures are the planks. Well, just take one step at a time until you reach its banks. Don't give up on your dreams. Chase them instead. You will find one morning, as you wake up from bed, that you are the person about whom you dreamed. And you can reach great heights, impossible though it seemed. When things go wrong and your back is to the wall, try to stand up. No more can you fall. Life is full of up and downs. Take them in stride. You will discover your little star inside. Everybody, please stand for the pledge. Pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you for having me. to you are family. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. Welcome. Well, I'm sure they're proud right along with us. Thank you for your time tonight. So the next item on tonight's agenda is school board recognitions. This evening, we are formally welcoming this year's student representative to the school board. Thank you, ma'am. That's you. So we have Ms. Manadero here to receive her oath of commitment, and we're glad that her family is here to stand with her. Ms. Manadero, as school board chairwoman, I have the honor and privilege of leading your oath of commitment. So please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Raquel Manadero, do solemnly affirm that I will support the mission of Newport News Public Schools. And I will faithfully perform my duties as the student representative to the school board. I will attend school board meetings and participate in board functions. I will serve as a facilitator to the superintendent student advisory group. I will serve as a facilitator to the student board advisory group. And I will contribute to school board discussion. And I will contribute to school board discussion. I will strive to fulfill the responsibilities of this position. I will strive to fulfill the responsibilities of this position. While excelling in my studies. While excelling in my studies. <laughs> 
<laughs> I split that up just a little bit. <laughs> According to the best of my abilities. According to the best, to the best of my abilities. Miss Menendero, congratulations and welcome to the school board. We'll ask you if you'd like to offer some comments, but you may do that from your seat if you'd like. Well, thank you. Please. Everyone else can take their seats. Yes. yes. Oh, we can do the picture. Sorry about that. I ran them away. Yeah. <laughs> and mom and dad. We'll do comments first. Give her comments? Let, yeah, let her do her comments first. Alrighty. Okay, Ms. Manadero, okay. you feel free to address if you'd like. I'd like to thank you for providing me this opportunity to um, make a positive impact on our education um, in our community and to students across the city. Um, I look forward to becoming more involved with the decisions um, made here and reflecting the beliefs of um, the students across Newport News. Um, I'm excited to learn and grow from this experience and contribute my perspective to the best of the benefit to the school board and um, within my position. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are looking forward to working with you. Um, we'll take a short break, and during this time, our viewing audience will have the opportunity to see this month's school board spotlight, and we will stand in recess for about six minutes. In early June, Palmer Elementary held a week-long 50th anniversary celebration in recognition of the school opening in May of 1972. One of the highlights was inviting school leaders, school board members, and other special guests to a court guard ceremony. The special celebration was broadcast live throughout the school by the talented students on Palmer's morning show crew and included student performances, an interview with the school board leader, and facts about the school's namesake, Latrell Palmer Sr. Months before the celebration, Palmer Principal Dr. Melody Cam received a phone call from a retired assistant principal who told her about a time capsule that had been buried in Palmer's courtyard 25 years ago during the school's 25th anniversary. When students unearthed the capsule in late winter, they found pictures and other paper artifacts. On display during the 50th anniversary celebration were all of the new items that students and staff had selected to refill the time capsule for students to discover many years from now to learn about Palmer's rich history. Outside the school, the Army's talented Tradoc Band hosted a school-wide concert while the students paraded around the dance party. Each class designed and constructed creative floats in honor of the school's birthday while fifth graders created banners that highlighted some of the amazing facts about Latrell Palmer Sr. He was the first principal of Huntington High School in 1920 and served there for 23 years. Palmer was active in the community through church and civic groups and was a strong advocate for equal pay 
for all teachers. And he helped form the Virginia Teachers Association, which eliminated discriminatory practices in public education. Happy 50th birthday to Palmer Elementary. All educators in Newport News Public Schools kicked off the new school year at the fourth annual Innovate Conference. The two-day gathering offered inspirational insights from guest speakers and school leaders in a virtual setting. Over 300 breakout sessions were hosted in person at Woodside High School and virtually online for educators to explore new methods of learning, ways to effectively incorporate technology into their lesson plans, and strategies to keep the focus of their efforts on growing all students towards success. These sessions were taught by our own talented educators and allowed staff to gain valuable relicensure points. On the second day, a student panel offered honest and real feedback about their journey along the educational path. This massive and impactful conference was organized by the talented teams from Instructional Technology and the Employee Expertise Department to help educators start the school year with an aim to impact student learning, growth, and achievement. During the summer, Heinz Middle School was the center of all things STEM. For two weeks in July, rising third through eighth grade students were enrolled in an immersive Cyber STEAM camp. The Cyber STEAM program already exists at seven schools across Newport News Public Schools, allowing students to learn the language of computer science through fun STEAM activities during the regular school year. The Cyber STEAM program, as well as the summer camp, are funded by a Department of Defense Education Activity Grant. While the program focuses on serving students at military-connected schools, all students were invited to attend, with 523 participating in the seven-day summer Cyber STEAM camp. At each grade level, students used different robots and technologies to achieve a range of goals while learning how to problem solve and use computational thinking strategies. Using Lego We Do kits, students overcame the challenges of space exploration through creative construction. Students coded with Edison robots to maneuver through challenging courses. After constructing their own city, students expertly maneuvered Ozobots from place to place and students utilize the near limitless potential of hummingbird kits to design, build, and program a variety of robots with different functions. 29 educators assisted students through the engineering design practice as they built foundational knowledge, created blueprints, and made their designs come to life through creative engineering. Some of these teachers had just graduated from college so the Cyber STEAM Camp was a wonderful introduction to utilizing technology as a teaching tool in the classroom. Business and educational partners shared their expertise as guest speakers to give the student engineers a broader understanding of what they were creating and the real world problems they were solving. At the end of the camp, school leaders and families were invited to an open house to tour the wonderful engineering designs and hear from the students about their technological creations. In just two short weeks, over 500 students gained valuable knowledge to meet various standards of learning while utilizing STEM to make our world a better place to live, work, and have fun. Last week, students returned for a brand new school year and exuberant educators welcomed them with much fanfare while guiding them to their homeroom classrooms. At a number of schools, community partners, city leaders, church volunteers, elected officials, and college students made the welcomes even more special. After hopping off their buses or being dropped off by their parents, students received high fives and cheers from a community of supporters. Student athletes from Christopher Newport University have a long-standing tradition of greeting students and staff to a new school year. As part of CNU's Kids First Athletic Outreach, Assistant Basketball Coach and Director of Community Outreach, Coach Roland Ross, organizes CNU's student athletes to make a difference in their community. At six elementary schools, athletic teams personally greeted students while cheering them on to a successful year. They also spent time on the first day to remind drivers to watch out for kids walking to and from their bus stops and 
to respect the school buses stopping to pick up kids. At various intersections along Warwick Boulevard, teams held up signs urging commuters to slow down and pay extra attention while driving. CNU's Greek organizations also joined the celebration on the first day of school. With a strong foundation in community service, several sororities and fraternities lined up in front of schools welcoming students and families. For many of these college students, this is just the first step to supporting and partnering with our schools and students throughout the rest of the school year. Students across Newport News Public Schools are now using T-Pass, a new student tracking tool for families. When a student's personal T-Pass card is scanned, the data is sent directly to the Here Comes the Bus app and website, letting parents and guardians know the exact time, date, and location of where students get on and off the school bus. Here Comes the Bus app can be downloaded from the Apple Store or Google Play at no cost. Parents, make sure your child takes their T-Pass to school every day and keeps it in the provided sleeve and lanyard for safekeeping. If a T-Pass is lost, the school office can provide a replacement. T-Pass is linked to your child's personal student ID number, so it will work on any bus your student rides and will continue to work if your child changes schools in Newport News. Students that do not ride the bus can use their T-Pass to reserve books in the library and hopefully, later this school year, the T-Pass will be used in the cafeteria when students receive their school lunch. I hope you enjoyed this month's School Board Spotlight. During our regular meetings, we provide time for the public to address the school board. These opportunities are scheduled in the early part of our agenda and also towards the end of the meeting. As advertised, citizens may submit comments via email or web form up to 30 minutes prior to our meeting time to be included in the official meeting record. For those of you joining us in person, the board considers this an opportunity to listen to your comments. Please understand that we will consider your concerns. We ask that you comply with our three minute limit. As you begin your comments, a green light will come on, a yellow light signals that you have 30 seconds remaining, and a red light and a beep indicates your time is up. As your name is called, please come forward. Our first person is Michael Bartley. Superintendent Parker, members of the school board, uh, thank you for giving me time to speak. I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Bennett and uh, Principal Knoll, who were very quick in responding to my concerns when I uh, contacted them online. Uh, this is all about an email that I received from the principal of Gildersleeve Elementary stating that they were going to do random suspicionless searches starting which, uh, last week of school. And um, I'm completely not okay with that. Um, I talked to my daughter about that, and she has reasons to be against it which I'm not gonna cover because they're private to her, but I do have my reasons. And the main one is that if you're searching for drugs, you can find them with false positives on innocuous substances. People have gone to jail for up to three months before crime labs have gone over Krispy Kreme sugar and cotton candy. I'm not gonna tell you my daughter won't have that in her backpack. That's just, I, I try and keep it clean, but that's, those kind of things just might be in there. And so when I talked to Dr. Barnett on the phone yesterday, she s said she believed that this had been done for 30 years since she started. And that may be true. Uh, and maybe that's why that was allowed, because in 2004, the Little Rock School Board was sued for, as far as I can tell, this exact um, thing. They were searching a junior high student. Everyone in the room, they leave your stuff, search their stuff. They lost the lawsuit. The court said that you cannot suspend the Fourth Amendment just by giving notice that you're doing that. So I ask you to update this policy. There's lots of ways to get to search people by generating reasonable suspicion. You can use metal detectors, you can use canines, and I just think it's lazy not to try and go through those steps before you start searching people's backpacks and rifling through their stuff. And I, I, 
I, as many people, are always worried about the school to prison pipeline, and I don't want my or any other children to get sucked into that. Please end this policy before it becomes a lawsuit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bartley. Pam Hall. Good evening. I am Pam Hall and I live in the Southeast community. I, along with over 400 petitioners, stand committed to returning our students to Huntington Middle School at 3401 Orchid Avenue as soon as possible. The 2017 concept of the mayor to have a campus should not continue to hinder our children's educational experience. We ask you to please rethink the decision to move the school. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hall. And thank you, um, both of you, for your comments and thoughts this evening. We will now move on to Section 3, the Consent Agenda, which includes 3.01 minutes from the school board retreat on August 16, 2022, 3.02 minutes from the closed meeting on August 16, 2022, and 3.03 .03 minutes from the regular meeting on August 16, 2022. 3.04, financial reports, including the revenue report for June 2022 and August 2022, and the expense reports for June 2022 and August 2022. 3.5, the personnel report, and 3.06, a budget transfer. So at this time, can we have a motion to approve that consent agenda? Madam, Madam, Chair. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to approve the consent agenda, agenda as presented. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Please call the roll. Brown. Four. Billy. Four. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Amon. Four. Best. Four. Searles Law. Four. Motion carries. 7-0. Thank you. And at this time, may I have a motion to approve the superintendent's personnel recommendations? Madam Chair, I move to approve the superintendent's personnel recommendations for Shannon Bailey, Director of Procurement, Fabian Davis, Administrative Assistant of Crittenden Middle School, William Taylor III, Principal at Enterprise Academy, Tiffany Thompson, Assistant Principal of Instruction at Heritage High School, Melanie Turan, Assistant Principal at Crittenden Middle School, and Rebecca Snyder, Assistant uh, Administrative Assistant at Newsom Park Elementary School. Okay, do we have a second? I second the motion. And any discussion? All right, let's take the roll. Brown. Four. Ely. Four. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Amon. Four. Best. Four. Searles Law. Four. Motion carries seven zero. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Parker, would you please introduce our administrative appointment? Excellent. And just just verify my that's Rebecca Snyder was here. Yes, I did. Awesome. Yes. All right. I want to be out of order here tonight. Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to introduce our appointments for this evening uh, to the board and to the to our Newport News community. I'll start by introducing Rebecca, Miss Rebecca Snyder, as the new administrative assistant at Newsom Park Elementary School. Uh, Rebecca, if you're here, would you please stand? Good to see you this evening. And Miss Snyder has a Master of Science in Educational Leadership from Old Dominion University and a Master of Science in Elementary Education from the University of Phoenix. Ms. Snyder has worked as Math Academy Coordinator, SOL Remediation Coordinator, Summer School Site Coordinator, and Lead Teacher, all with Hampton City Public Schools. She is joining us, our Newport News family, this evening as an Administrative Assistant at Newsom Park Elementary. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening. And uh, please, uh, you're welcome to, to bring to greetings to the board and introduce your family or friends who are joining you this evening. Good to see everyone. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and welcome aboard, Rebecca. We look forward to your leadership. Uh, I'd also like to introduce Ms. Shannon Bailey as the new Director of Procurement. Shannon, would you please stand? 
Good evening. Ms. Bailey has a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration from Old Dominion University. She has a certification as a Virginia Construction Contracting Officer from the Virginia Department of General Services Division of Engineering and, Bu and Building and a certification as a Virginia Contracting Officer from Virginia Institute of Procurement. Ms. Bailey currently works for the Newport News Public Schools as the Procurement Supervisor. She has worked as the Assistant Director of Procurement Services with Christopher Newport University, mm -hmm. the Strategic Sourcing Officer for Virginia Commonwealth College System, a Capital Procurement Manager for, for the Norfolk State University, and as a Contract Manager for Hampton Roads Transit. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Bailey, for being here this evening and for this opportunity that, that, uh, that you are, are well prepared for. Would you like to bring greetings and introduce any of your friends or family who are joining you this evening? I would like to say good evening to Dr. Parker and also to the school board. Thank you for this opportunity. And I have here my sister, Carla Hendricks. She's here joining me this evening. Thank you, and we look forward to your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Our next appointee, uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Fabian Davis as the new administrative assistant at Crittenden Middle School. Mr. Davis, please have a please stand. <laughs> Mr. Davis has a Master of Arts in Administration and Supervision from Averitt University. He has a Special Education Licensure um, cohort from Virginia Union, Union University. He has a Bachelor of Arts in History from Wake Forest University. Uh, Mr. Davis currently works for Newport News Public Schools as a special education teacher at Heritage High School. Mr. Davis has worked for Hampton City Public Schools as a special education teacher at Hunting, Hunter B. Andrews Elementary School and an in-school suspension teacher as well. Mr. Davis, good evening and congratulations. Please bring greetings and uh, do you have any friends or family joining you this evening? Mr. Matias Smith here. Thank you. <laughs> I have my daughter and my oh. mother here, yeah. and my family from our home watching on, on the TV. Oh. Awesome. And Mr. Davis, we, we, we thank you as well. Look forward to your leadership. Our next appointee is Mr. William Taylor III as the new uh, principal at Enterprise Academy. Good evening. Mr. Taylor has a master's degree in educational administration and leadership from Cambridge College, a Bachelor of Arts in political science and education from St. Paul's College. He currently works for Hampton City Public Schools as the assistant principal at Sims Middle School. He has worked for Portsmouth Public Schools as the assistant principal at West Haven Elementary School, Craddock Middle School, and I.C. Norcom High School. Mr. Taylor has also worked as a history teacher for Newport News Public Schools in the past uh, and Brunswick County Public Schools. Mr. Taylor, welcome back home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, as you bring greetings, do you have any friends or family joining you this evening? Yes, and uh, welcome, school board, and uh, Dr. Parker, thank you very much. Um, I have with me my father, uh, my mother here, his wife, <laughs> my brother-in-law, my mother-in-law, oh, oh. and Mr. Bill. Oh. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> And, and I see your, your lovely wife looks a little familiar. She's one of our, uh, one of our friends. <laughs> so welcome back to Newport News. You never can stray too far. You always come back home. All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, he is one of our, uh, a, a fraternity friend of ours. <laughs> Mr. Hunter just reminded us of that. Uh, so, all right. Uh, our next appointee is Ms. Tiffany Thompson as the new assistant principal of instruction at Heritage High School. Good evening. <laughs> Ms. Thompson has a master's degree in educational leadership from Regent University. She has a Bachelor of Science in Biological Science from Hampton University. Ms. Thompson currently works for Newport News Public Schools as the assistant principal at Denby High School. She has also worked as a Spark Summer School Administrator, a science lead teacher at Woodside High School, and a science teacher at Charlottesville High School for Charlottesville City Public Schools. Congratulations, Ms. Thompson. Thank you. 
Okay, now, uh, would you bring greetings this evening and introduce us to your friends and family? Uh, yes, first of all, I want to thank you, Dr. Parker, and members of the school board. Um, joining me today via the live stream, uh, my son at George Mason University is watching, and my family in Kentucky is watching. And then here to support me tonight, I have my extended Tim Jerome's family. Um, so thank you all. I just want to thank you for the opportunity um, that's been given to me today, and I look forward uh, to serving as assistant principal of instruction at Heritage High School. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, our next appointee is Miss Melanie Turan as the new assistant principal of Crittenden Middle School. <laughs> Good evening. Now, Miss Turan has an educational education specialist degree in educational leadership and a school library endorsement and a master of science degree in education, elementary education from Old Dominion University. She has a bachelor of science in interdisciplinary studies from the Norfolk State University. Uh, Ms. Turan currently works for Newport News Public Schools as an administrative assistant and dean of students at Crittenden Middle School. Uh, she has worked for, for as the administrator for Spark Summer Program at Stony Run Elementary and administrative intern for Spark Summer Programs at Yates Elementary and the lead library media specialist at Heritage High School and at Achievable Dream Academy. A lead teacher at Briarfield Elementary School and as a teacher at Magruder Elementary School uh, and she is joining us this evening to take on a much bigger role. So congratulations, Mr. Rand. Thank you. And would you like to bring greetings and introduce any friends or family who are joining you this evening? Yes, thank you all for having me. I have both my families here. I have my personal family, my husband, Ron, my daughter, Courtney, and my work family, my all their principal, Natalia Smith, and seventh grade assistant principal, Denisha Baseball. Thank you, families. Awesome. Congratulations. And congratulations to all of our appointees, Madam Chair. That concludes our appointments for this evening. Sounds great. Well, welcome to the family. We're glad you're here and sharing your talents with us. So the next item on our agenda is section four, um, our action items. And on the agenda is 4.01, several revised policies from the instruction chapter of the policy manual. Dr. Parker, did you want to make any comments? I know we had these presented to us back in June. Well, I'd like to thank the board and uh, and uh, um, Mrs. Brooks for all of the hard work and Lynn Wallen for all of the work in bringing these instructional policies forward. We uh, tabled a few of these because we wanted to put more work in, uh, put an extra set of eyes on some of these instructional policies. Very important. It's, it's, it's the, the meat and potatoes of what we do. So thank the board for uh, for taking the time, Madam Chair. I know you wanted to bring these forward in uh, groupings, mm -hmm. so uh, we stand ready at the ready to answer any questions you may have. Okay, great, thank you. So the first policy, first set of policies are policies related to the instructional program. Um, they're uh, IE organization of instruction, IG curriculum development, adoption, implementation, and review. IGA, new program proposal and approval, and IHBH, school program options. Do I have a motion to adopt these policies? Madam Chair, I move to approve these new and revised policies just presented. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All right, Ms. Buffalo, please call the roll. My pleasure. Mr. Brown? Four. Ely? Four. Harris? Four. Hunter? Four. Amon? Four. Best? Four. Searles Law? Four. Motion carries seven zero. The next set of policies related to are related to courses and instructional support programs. IHA, curricula offerings, IHAL, teaching about religion, IHAMB. Family Life Education, IHBD, State and Federal Instructional Support Programs, IHBEA, English as a Second Language, ESL. Do I have a motion to uh, adopt these policies? Madam Chair, I move to, move, move to approve the new and revised policies as presented. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? Well, I'll just say, uh, like I said, Madam Chair, I appreciate uh, the work of the policy committee uh, and the, the work of the board. I know it's uh, went through you know, through several revisions in this grouping, and I appreciate the, uh, the the work that went into coming to compromise uh, in several areas. Okay, I agree. 
agree. Any other comments? All right. We'll call the roll. Four. 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 And our final set are policies related to instructional resources and materials. So we have IJ, instructional resources and materials, IJNB, resource teachers, changed to reading and math intervention teachers, IJNC, school library media centers, IJNCB, instructional resources and services, um, and IJO, community learning resources. Let me make a comment that IJNCB, the Instructional Resources and Services, is proposed for deletion. Do I have a motion to adopt? Uh, Madam Chair, I'll, I'll make a motion to delete IJNCB. Okay. Do we have a second for the motion to delete IJNCB? Second. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Let's call the roll on that. Four. 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 Motion carries seven zero. So by letter recognition, I will repeat the ones that we will uh, put forth for a vote. It's IJ, IJNB, IJNC, and then IJO. Do I have a motion to approve these. Madam Chair, I move to approve the new and revised policies as presented. And the second? Second. Thank you. Conversation. Well, I'll again make a, make a comment that I was, uh, we, we got it done, it was for one word, and that uh, one word designee was, uh, was removed from IJ, which uh, uh, now, uh, allows me to support this, so I appreciate that. I, I know that there was uh, a lot of work that was done. <clears throat> Again, uh, that these set of policies acknowledge the rights of parents to participate uh, with their children in their education and to monitor uh, what is going on with their children. So this was something that I think was very important to all of us and, uh, and I think uh, needed, and I think it's, it's great that we've demonstrated the leadership of uh, revising these policies. Thank you. Any further comment? Please call the roll. Brown. Four. Ely. Four. Harris. Four. Hunter. Four. Amon. Four. Best. Four. Searles Law. Four. Motion carries seven zero. Thank you. And I am going to reiterate how much I appreciate everyone working together to get these policies um, reviewed, revised, <laughs> re-reviewed, re-revised, <laughs> and you know that goes for the policy committee, but it also goes for our board members too. Um, so thank you for that. We've got several that are coming up that are gonna be big ones. We have put those aside so that we can spend a little more time on those as Dr. Parker mentioned, but we're very happy to have these approved at this point. So, all right. So the next uh, agenda item is section, uh, or section five, reports and information. So we're gonna do 5.01, the monthly school update. Dr. Parker. Thank you, ma'am, Madam Chair. And <clears throat> for those who have uh, our, our wonderful guests who have uh, come to support your appointees this evening, you're welcome to stay. However, if you're going out to dinner or wanna go out and celebrate, you are free at this time to, uh, to detach yourself. You, uh, of course, you're welcome. And Madam Chair, we'll give it a moment and call Mr. Wayne Santos, uh, our Executive Director of Technology, forward to uh, begin our school update. Uh, in a moment.
We'll let them, we'll let them get it done. It's us out and we're ready to roll. Oh. Okay, and in the beginning of the uh, monthly school update, we uh, uh, we have not had much momentum in in, uh, co in terms of COVID transmission, so we did not uh, um, include an up a formal update on on uh, in the monthly school update for this month. Can, can yeah. we clap on that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so if, the, if, if the board uh, are again, we will continue to update our information on the web division webpage on COVID transmission. If the public has any interest now, or if there are any. Uh, constituent uh, concerns or questions regarding COVID-19. Uh, but we are in a good place right now and we'd like to knock on wood and keep keep moving on. So Mr. Santos uh, has recently and his staff have completed a uh, technology distribution. So he'll kick us off with uh, giving the board an update on where we are with getting our one-to-one -one device initiative uh, up and running. Thank you, Dr. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, School Board members and uh, Dr. Parker again. So what I'll do is just give you a quick update of where we are for the computer distribution and, and what it looks like thus far. Uh, next slide, please. So to date, so we've, all the device distribution has gone according to schedule. So we've had no impediments, impediments thus far. Uh, the total amount of devices that has been issued is 23,746. And I've broken it down for both secondary and elementary. And when I get to the next slide, I'll give you kind of a more granular snapshot of what it looks like from the secondary lens. But the total uh, devices issued for secondary was 12,273, for elementary, 11,023. So this is a win for us, the first time actually doing a one to one distribution in the school. So uh, thanks for the staff and for the, uh, the building administration for the flexibility, uh, allowing us to facilitate these throughout the school days. So I greatly appreciate it. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a, a more granular view of what it looks like from the secondary lens. I didn't add elementary just due to the amount of elementary schools, but I did want to capture the amount of devices that were distributed per the elementary schools. So here's the high school numbers uh, broken down per each high school with the amount of devices uh, in each school as well as with the middle school. So hopefully that, that paints a picture to the amount of devices that we have going home with the students uh, this school year. So pending any questions by the board, I'll be followed by uh, Bridget Adams with Youth Development. I just have one question. Yes, ma'am. For the students that did not receive devices, that's because they have their own devices or they don't? For the students that did not receive, receive devices? The, the, so the if they didn't receive a device on the initial distribution, it was because they already <coughs> had a device that wasn't returned the previous years. Okay. So when they came in, as we did the distribution to each school, what took place was we scanned that device, well, we scanned the ID number, and then we put up the student's name. And then per our one-to-one -one device, how we track it in our in our one-to-one -one plus system, we can say, hey, uh, said student still has a device out. We verify that they still have the device, ask them to return that device, and then we give them a refresh device. So what, what we were trying to go away from, Dr. Best, was trying to issue multiple devices, and mm -hmm. then the possibility of duplicate devices being lost mm -hmm. as we work towards hardening up our accountability postures. Okay, we appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. One, uh, one question, and that's in regards to now that we've distributed all the devices and we distributed hotspots as well, um, can we develop a mapping uh, that would show uh, the city and where we have households that don't have Wi-Fi or don't have Wi-Fi access? And so that would just be uh, the question is, do we have the data and the capability now to generate that type of report? So I think we would first have to find out. So we would have to get some type of report, Mr. Brown, that says these people have requested Wi-Fi first. And then based on the request, we can say it's deemed because they don't have it. So I think if we have the information per the request, then yes, we can provide you a map of who doesn't have Wi-Fi. But without getting that request, we just won't know, right? So the, when, we, when we start looking at data analytics and data points, right, we want to make sure we paint an accurate picture, which is hard to do without a request. So I can't say that these households don't have internet if they haven't first requested internet stating that they don't have it if that makes mm -hmm. sense, right? So I need to have insight to who has internet and who doesn't. So the typical household isn't just gonna say, if Mr. Brown, if you have internet, you're not gonna report to the school, hey, I have internet, I'm good, right? So we have to base those, those data points off of those who request that. Now, if, if w once we do have that, or we can give you the data on who we're providing internet to, right? So we can give you those data points, essentially, but opposed to who doesn't have it or what areas, we would have to get requests to answer those questions. And I just think that information of who we're providing uh, hotspots too, or where where we believe there potentially may be uh, lack of Wi-Fi access is important uh, information to, that we could share with the city, uh, especially as we <clears throat> look where infrastructure needs are 
and uh, where uh, folks could, uh, could, we could have some more cell towers and some more, um, some more optic cable in their neighborhoods. I'll make a note of that, circle back and give you an update, Dr. Park. Yes, sir. Are families still able to take advantage of reduced um, cost Wi-Fi at this time? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Pending any questions, I'll be following Bridge Adams. Thank you. All right. And Mrs. Adams is uh, ramping up the youth development initiatives around the city. So uh, that is the, uh, the the bulk of our report this evening because a lot of things going on in our schools, getting kids uh, acclimated and acquainted with activities so, and opportunities. Thank Ms. you uh, for having me here tonight, uh, Madam Charles Law, Dr. Bess board members, our newest board member, Raquel, very nice meeting you today, and Dr. Parker. I have a disclaimer. So it's been a year since I've been here before you, so I have <laughs> lots of cute pictures of kids to distract you because I have a lot to share and really excited to do so. I really um, am excited to just, just share with you some of the work that we've been doing with youth development, but I always like to start at the beginning just to make sure that we're all um, in the same place about what youth development is and how it supports the greater work of Newport News Public Schools, the strategic plan. I always explain uh, the, the easiest way to explain youth development and what it is, is positive experiences plus positive relationships and positive environments equals positive youth development. Mm -hmm. We have a more detailed youth development model uh, that we use to drive our work and that also maps to the profile of a learner as well as the strategic plan and all of that will be shared with, um, with the work that I shared tonight. And I do want to point out that one of the things that we did this year is we came up with our own mantra uh, for youth development and that our principle is really to make sure that any work that we do, uh, the result of it is that students feel seen, heard, and loved. So that is our goal for this year. The majority of the work that we do in youth development really falls under the three strategic goals student success, student and staff wellness, and enhanced partnerships. And that's really where I'm gonna spend some time tonight. Uh, this graphic really just shows you how the youth development model, which drives our work, also intersects with the profile of a learner. Because the work that we do fuels a profile of a learner and contributes to students actually achieving that particular goal. I'm gonna start with student success, and I'll read from my notes so I don't get distracted. Uh, but stu student success, strategic, strategic support, which aligns with youth development, reads as providing multiple opportunities for students to develop and grow through extracurricular activities. Well, that is something that we love to do. The number of opportunities for student involvement available to our students far exceeds that which you might find in other divisions. And this is really due to the number of dedicated staff members that we have committed to ensuring that every student in our school is, is connected to at least one club, sport, or activity. Now some schools may differ in their approach to making this possible. Uh, either they offer clubs during resource time, club days, flex periods, and of course after school. And several schools have found really creative ways to make student involvement possible during the school day while still protecting instructional time. And this is ideal because, oh, this is ideal because many of our students are not able to stay after school and some uh, just won't. So by offering these opportunities during the school day, we increase access to extracurricular activities. Over the past two years, we've worked really hard to develop ways to measure the effectiveness of our work including site-based inventories, reports, and even walk-through observation tools which really focus on youth development and what's, how it's happening in the buildings. It's also really important that our school-based staff is focused on the goals that will drive student outcomes in their building and also that they have the quantitative and qualitative data to know if their strategies and the strategies that they're using every day are actually working. So extracurricular activities includes those which extend education beyond the school walls. Youth development sponsors a number of unique experiences, many of which you've actually participated in, for students throughout the year. I'm just going to highlight a few here. For example, our middle school Rise Male Empowerment Program participants got to experience a STEM Day activity, Coasters 101, a behind the scenes look at roller coasters at Bush Gardens. So they're mm -hmm. used to going and actually riding on the roller coasters. They actually got to go behind the scenes and see how they work. Also, a few of our Bloom members who participate in the Dr. Christine Mann Darden National Society of Black Engineers Junior Chapter were the only special guests at NASA 
Take a Girl to Engineering Day. So they got to rub elbows, not only with Dr. Darden, but also with national NASA leaders and other NASA um, leaders, at, um, including rocket science. Students also participate in cultural, college and career exploration activities, and so much more. We rely on our students like Raquel and like George, who was here with us earlier, uh, to really inform our work and many serve on task force, not only for us, but also for the community. Finally, we are excited to partner with the Hampton Roads Chess Association to introduce chess at some of our schools. Student and staff wellness, the vast majority of youth development work aligns with student wellness. Our focus is really to empower students to be global leaders and citizens who take care of themselves and others emotionally, socially, and physically. As you know, STAND is our campaign to discourage bullying and to promote positive school culture in all of our schools. Next month, we will celebrate STAND Month, which will include a, a number of activities that I will share with you a little later this evening. A few of you supported our STAND Together and Read Day last year and read to our elementary students. The Live Well Student Wellness Club, which mirrors our adult wellness program, is designed to have students lead efforts in their schools to promote overall well-being among their peers, including wellness campaigns, for example, to promote better nutrition, or awareness campaigns, which align with monthly recognitions like teen dating violence or mental health. Creating environments in which kindness is the norm is a priority throughout the year, but we collectively celebrate Operation Kindness Week each year to promote a sense of belonging for all students. This year, we also introduced Celebrate Me, a division-wide campaign to celebrate cultural heritage, and we look forward to doing that again this year in early March. We also launched several programs designed to build skills in students at various grade levels, including the Feelings Project, which was sponsored by our Flourish Empowerment Program to provide six hours of programming on regulating emotions for over 120 ninth and 10th grade students, and multiple offerings under RISE, which provided special pro specialized programming for di diverse groups of students, and I'll talk about some of those in a few minutes. Uh, most of youth development work that we do could not be accomplished without the help of a number of community partners who support our students and our work daily. Uh, CNU continues to be a strong mutual partner as we connect their students with opportunities in our schools and they provide our schools with much needed support. Our students often benefit from strong relationships with community partners like Centera who, when they decided to offer their first ever health career summer camp for middle school students, contacted Newport News Public Schools. We also meet on a monthly basis with members of the Newport News Youth Collective, which is comprised of community partners with similar visions and goals, such as Newport News Parks and Rec, the Boys and Girls Club, the Newport News Department of Youth Services, and the Newport News Police Department, Community and Youth Outreach Department, among other partners. We meet every month to synchronize our calendar, calendars and to work smarter and not harder to serve youth in Newport News. We support each other's projects and partner for special opportunities like the Newport News Youth Wellness Expo. Newport News Parks and Rec used to offer a summer camp wellness expo in, uh, each year at the mall on the same day that we had our annual kickball tournament and violence prevention uh, initiative. So we decided to partner this year and what resulted was we combined our resources and were able to offer a bigger, more comprehensive experience for youth and families. And in addition to working with local partners, our department continues to reach out, not only to increase opportunities for students, but also to strengthen our own expertise in evidence-based youth development strategies. The UVA Youth Next Center for Effective Youth Development has been our coach for more than a year now and the Urban League of Hampton Roads and Mentor Virginia are helping us to recruit and train mentors to support our programming. This is just a short list of the community partners who support our youth development goals. We're fortunate to have several school-based and division level initiatives which are growing and making a difference for kids, but I wanna take a few minutes just to highlight two new initiatives. A year ago today, our NNPS family was shaken by a very tragic event at Heritage High School. Shortly after that, we were left once again confronted with the reality of violence in the Minchville parking lot. As a youth development team, we really wanted to be a part of the solution. 
So we designed a proposal for a new program called My Brother's Keeper. Heritage High School enthusiastically accepted the invitation to participate in the pilot, which was very successful. The, the work was led and continues to be led by what we call credible messengers. And these are individuals who are really able to connect with students on a much deeper level. After the very first session, there was a request to also launch My Sister's Keeper, which we did. Ultimately, we wanted to expand this program, which focuses on academic enrichment, future orientation, empowerment, and mental health to all of our remaining high schools. So we applied for the Newport News Gun Violence Intervention Prevention Grant and was awarded nearly $93,000 to implement mm. this Tier 3 intervention for high school students. So as we developed this project, it became obvious that we needed to create similar interventions for our elementary students, as well as create a process that will support participating students even when there is an event that results in them being disconnected from their home school. So we're looking to partner not only with our schools, but also with Juvenile Detention and Enterprise Academy to make sure that we have continuous support for those students. It would be impossible for our team to do this work alone. We're extremely grateful for the support of our internal departments, such as student, student advancement, which includes school counseling and our CTE team, which is helping us to create a comprehensive program that will help us achieve positive student outcomes. We are also collaborating with other grant recipients and community organizations to ensure that wraparound services are available to meet the needs of these students when they need it and how they need it. Finally, the Center for Crime, Equity, and Justice Research and Policy at CNU is supporting us by helping us develop performance measures and also having graduate students work with us on this project. I'm really excited to share with you tonight a vision that we've talked about for three years that has finally come to fruition. Connecting students to clubs and activities is low on the youth engagement continuum. As we've made gains over the years, we have continually asked ourselves, what is next? Most of our schools have also made leadership development a priority. And at the very end of the continuum is youth organizing, which leads to real systemic change. The Emerging Leader Institute, which George Smith is a part of, George was uh, here with us earlier today, was established to combine our youth development and leadership development efforts to equip students with information, resources, and skills to serve as global leaders. So currently we have 85 11th and 12th 12th grade students from all of our high schools uh, who are members of ELI. In year one, their program of work includes monthly professional development on topics such as business and professional etiquette, characteristics of effective leadership, civic engagement, and business and entrepreneurship. In addition to professional development, ELI members can participate in empowerment experiences that enhance their skills, such as public speaking, writing, and scholarship workshops. In return, all ELI members agree to serve as resources in their schools or community. The vast majority of them are excited to serve as mentors to their younger peers, both in the elementary, middle school, and high school level. And in year two, students will work in teams to complete a capstone research project focused on the strand of their choice with extraordinary mentors in that field. Before I close, I want to let our families know that many of our schools are in the process of connecting their students to opportunities. We believe that every student should have the opportunity to lead, serve, and contribute to their school community. Although many schools have already started recruiting, October 10th through the 14th will be Get Connected Week, which is designated as a real push to get all students connected to at least one club, sport, or activity. Schools are hosting club fairs, using their Canvas pages to recruit, and offering many ways for students to participate. Throughout the year, youth development monitors student involvement, and most importantly, to figure out who is not connected so that we can figure out why and seek those students out. So we invite all of our students, families, and community partners to stand with us to promote positive culture during Stand Month, which is also National Bullying Prevention Month. Next week, our schools will begin to share their activities that, have, that they have planned for the month. The division calendar will also be available online, as well as ideas on how our students and families can participate. We encourage you to take some note of important dates, including uh, 
October 3rd, which is a Monday. We encourage everyone to wear blue for World Bullying Prevention Day. October 18th, which is our Stand Together and Read Day. We invite any of you who are interested to come with us and read to our elementary school, school student books on kindness and inclusion. And then October 28th, which is Stand Night at Todd Stadium. Finally, on November 4th and 5th, we will have and you don't want to miss this, our More Than a Princess conference at Woodside High School, uh, which will welcome 600 students uh, to participate in a rally on Friday night and an empowerment workshops all day for students, families, and educators. So registration for that conference will begin in the next two weeks, and we hope to see you all there. I know I've taken up a great deal of your time, but I would be really remiss if I didn't introduce my youth development family. So I'm going to ask Mike Nichols, and Christina Buckingham to please stand quickly. <laughs> uh, they work tirelessly uh, for our kids, and I'm just appreciative that, of the support that they give to me. So I, I appreciate you want to say that publicly. Uh, I also, this concludes my presentation, and I would love to answer any questions that you may have. Do you have any questions? I see. Um, I see one. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Brown. So, so I'll ask one question. I, sure. I think it'll be an easy one, <clears throat> which is, uh, so the Get Connected program, um, I think obviously that's going to cover our high schools and when can we get a, um, can the board, can we get a report when you're done with your mm -hmm. Get Connected campaign, the percentage of high schoolers who are, who are connected. But then as well, I wonder about middle school. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so can you talk about how much effort is being focused on some Absolutely. of the younger, the younger ages? Because we have the dedicated support, our youth development leads and activity directors in every school, they are responsible for connecting students to those activities. So elementary schools, they're, they're looking for 100% participation for clubs and activities. Middle school uh, mirrors high school. They have just as many clubs. They have the same kind of dedication. Some of them are doing flex days and club days. They have the same recruitment strategies. And then in Synergy, we go into Synergy and every student that's participating in a club or activity, we actually connect that group code for that club to that student's name. So if you're in five clubs, all five of those clubs are connected to your name. So then it gives me the ability then to go in and say, show me everyone who's in bloom. I can not only see everyone that's in bloom or on the football team, but I can also see uh, their GPA. I can see um, their absences. I can see their discipline. I can see. So that's how we're monitoring student participation in clubs and activities. Thank you. I had a comment. Yes, Dr. Best. Well, I kind of had a question, but I don't really expect you to answer. But my question is like, how do you do all of this? <laughs> but I understand how you're able to do it is your why, because you know that it's just very, very important and it's a hook for, for many students. So I just wanted to commend you all for a job um, well done because this will be the thing that draws some students in and, and we need them here. So I just want to say thank you and keep up the good work. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for your support. When we see your faces and you're reading to kids and you come to our events, it reinforces the work that we're doing. So we appreciate that as well. And this is how we do it. It's, it's a big team. It's a really big team. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. And Madam Chair, we, we thought we'd share that uh, youth development with you because they're up and running and um, we already are seeing kids getting connected. So, um, and we know next week, next month is Bullying Awareness Month and it's always a great, uh, very busy month for youth development. So uh, we wanted Mr. Adams to have an opportunity to share some of the many other things that they're doing them mm -hmm. outside of that that month's activities with you this evening. So thank you for giving that, providing that opportunity. So that concludes the monthly um, school update. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to take um, Gary Hunter's comment that great things are happening in Newport News Public Schools <laughs> after a presentation like that. Mm -hmm. It is just wonderful we can provide for our students in that way. And if the board is interested, I'm, I'm gonna have Mrs. Uh, Buffalo uh, put uh, some of those dates on my calendar, but um, we'll be happy to, oh, she's already she on. Already mm -hmm. has. We'll make yes. sure those dates are available to you, it's uh, loaded on the activities calendar for the board as well. <coughs> Thank you. So next on our agenda is 5.02, assessment calendar update. 5.03 is the 10-day membership report. And 5.04, the construction report. Board members, you have received copies of these reports. Are there any questions? And Madam Chair, the assessment calendar, I believe, is um, my team from uh, <coughs> EASO, 
who will present some information regarding the calendar for the board this evening. Uh, in the board uh, report, you have information on um, the attendance um, procedural changes we will be bringing to the board in October, but we provided the board with information on uh, attendance, uh, so there are several documents we and a letter to the board that's included in the board packet uh, for this for this month's meeting, and it is public facing, Madam Chair. So, um, so the community, because we will be introducing that, uh, communicating attendance this month to the, okay. to the community. Great. So, without further ado, four five point zero two the assessment calendar update. I'd like to call up Dr. Haskins and her team to talk about uh, our assessment program this this, this year. Hello, hello, and good evening. And before I get started, I just want to say um, to Youth Development, can can we get connected, <laughs> please? You all are doing some awesome work. Um, so good evening, um, Madam Chair Sirs Law, Madam Best, members of the school board, and Dr. Parker. My name is Dr. Haskins, and I'm the Director of Equity, Assessment, and Strategic Operations. I'm joined by Mrs. Sherry Sanchez, our assessment supervisor, and together we will review the Newport News Public Schools assessment process, plan, and assessment calendar for the 22-23 school year. In Newport News Public Schools, we acknowledge the variations of assessments and use them as a tool to help support the learning process. Assessments, along with the full learning experience, are designed to lead our students to becoming college, career, and citizen ready and grow the characteristics of the Newport News Public Schools profile of a learner. The goal of our assessment plan is to provide key insights into student performance to ensure timely remediation and enrichment opportunities for our students and ultimately guide them towards mastery of content. So right here, I chose the mirror right there in the little corner as a visual to show the connection to um, our assessment calendar and the process we use to ensure our students can demonstrate understanding of the taught curriculum. Our calendar should reflect our process and our process should reflect, be reflected in the calendar. This year, there is particular emphasis on shorter timely assessments that are closer to the time students learn the information. Also, we have added benchmark, march testing, benchmark testing, which will provide rich data on student need and potential instructional supports. Now we will have Ms. Sanchez review our updates and unpack the calendar for elementary, middle, and high. Good evening. So I'm going to talk about just the updates for the first semester calendar. So in the um, updates, you have the Newport News local assessments. Those are your formative assessments and summative assessments to include common unit as tests as well as benchmarks. Um, we have the Virginia Assessment Program, which is our VAP test. Those are your SOLs and the growth assessments that students participate in. The Virginia Alternate Assessment Program, which is what we call VAP. That's an alternate assessment for students with significant cognitive disabilities. And then the Nagulary Nonverbal Ability or the Otis Lennon School Ability Test um, is a screener assessment that students are given that identifies students that are eligible to participate in the Gifted Services Program. And then the local alternative assessments. Um, when the state did away with the grade three history and grade three science, grade five writing, and United States history 1865, which we do sixth grade, um, United States history 1865 to present, which is seventh grade, um, the state still required that local school divisions continue to teach the content and measure student achievement with local alternative assessments, including authentic and performance assessments. So those are just kind of the various types of assessments students will receive first semester. And this is just an example of um, on the left hand side of your screen to give you the assessment types. Um, so what's presented to you is a list of various assessments that will be given to students throughout the school year to include things such as the fall growth assessment, PALS, local alternative assessments, reading inventory, common unit assessments, and benchmarks. Um, on the right side of your screen is a sample of the testing window. So it just lists the test, the window that the schools are expected to have students participate. And then further right is just kind of a, a little summary or a key to let families know the acronyms that students will receive, that acronyms of the tests that students will participate in. We have an example for middle school. Um, just like elementary school, it includes some of the similar tests, things such like the fall growth assessment. You have students who participate in grades three through eight. Um, but in addition to that, they start with IXL and then no red ink. Also, it is, it is also paired with the assessments and the testing window. And, and again, the acronyms for our families to be able to get a little bit more information on what the assessment is. 
And then in high school, um, high school you're going to see a larger amount of tests for students because there are so many things that, they're, that they have to um, be assessed in, in order to prepare themselves for graduation. So you'll see some of the similar things, but then we have included the SAT, PSAT, ACT work keys, which is the alternate assessment that we give students um, in order for them to earn a verified credit in reading or writing. Um, and then of course you have your fall writing and your fall non-writing um, included. So those are just some examples of the tests. And again, you'll see kind of the testing window of what they have and then an, an explanation of the acronyms. Um, and again, this is just an example of the first semester that students would receive assessments. Um, and then it just continues on second semester. Uh, so we have the, the updates. I'll pass it over to Dr. Haskins so she can kind of let you know how we're communicating the information out to families. So assessments are communicated in a layered approach. So from EASO, Equity Assessment and Strategic Operations, to division leadership and school leadership, um, then we, we have this conversation and then we publish the division assessment calendar that includes all the information that we just shared. Individual schools will communicate to families and stakeholders prior to upcoming assessments. And on each school's website under the Families tab, there is a link that provides a PDF version of the calendar that we showed in the previous slides. We're also updating the NNPS um, assessment, count, assessment letters in which a link will be added to the Families tab that will take them to the testing department, so to um, the testing department website to retrieve information about the various assessments in which their student may participate in. And in conclusion, these are just um, moving forward. We have some ongoing formative and summative assessments. We are having curated data talks with division leadership, which will then funnel down to our principals and funnel down to our teachers. And also, we are making sure that we have professional learning communities that are going to drive the instructional decisions. And I just want to give a huge <coughs> shout out to Synergy Analytics. Um, that, is our CIS pro, that is our CIS database that is housing some of this information and is making um, analysis of student achievement data timely and um, easy to analyze. So with that said, do you all have any questions? I do have a quick question on the, um, and thank you for the update, there's a lot going on, so it's good to kind of know and plan, but looking at the, um, this was just from, from, from some personal experience, sorry, trying to get my words together, um, but the, the Naglieri and the Olsat, um, for I guess more identifying maybe kids who might need the more gifted education or different education. Um, are all students in those grades given the OLSAT as well as the Naglieri or how are... So currently right now we test all of the second grade students with the Naglieri test mm -hmm. and they have referred fifth graders in the Naglieri and then based on their performance there they would move on to the second round of testing which is the OLSAT. Okay. I do know in conversation with Dr. Beckerdite they are trying to grow that program so we're looking at moving forward having more students um, be active participants just versus just having just the second grade the second okay. grade group test because our our personal experience has been you may have students that don't do great on the Naglieri mm -hmm. but they do very well on the OLSAT because it's a slightly different mm -hmm. approach mm -hmm. so I was just it might be something for them to consider if you have a student who you might want to let them both that everybody take both um, in the sense that they you personally we had one do extremely well on the OLSAT but if I hadn't known about it and asked for it, they wouldn't have gotten to th that second test and it made a big difference in their education, so. Sure thing, we'll take it back and mm -hmm. I'll absolutely have that dis discussion with Dr. Becker Dye. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Yes. <coughs> Just make uh, one comment in regards to uh, the PSAT and that uh, I think it's beneficial for kids to get that earlier and by earlier I mean middle school, like eighth grade. Um, given that there's no penalty for a child not doing well on it and it essentially lets the kid know where they are. Uh, you know, I think offering it in middle school is a real boost, I know, for my own children. The PSAT is when the college letters and the recruiting starts and that's when kids get the opportunity for college scholarships are from taking the PSAT. I know that from experience. So um, I believe it's just really important that we offer that, um, even if it's optional for kids to sit through that and encourage them to, to do that in the eighth grade. So then that they'll be better prepared for the PSAT again in high school, making it on their way to national merit if, they, if they're so inclined uh, for 
for pushing that direction? We do. We offer the PSAT 8-9 test for middle school students. Okay. Typically, it'll go through students who are in upper level math courses because of the nature of what they get tested on for math. So middle school students are afforded that opportunity through a sign-up program. Um, and then we have all 9th, 10th, and 11th graders that participate in the PSAT. And of course, we have SAT days as well. So we're trying to cover the bases and grow that program as well. Now, if I, if I just want my child to take the PSAT, can I just sign them up? At their school yeah you can for the middle school mm -hmm. okay. and I believe I want to tell you it's through the counselor is where the sign up is going to be yes mm -hmm. and so that's all you have to do and then we would take care of it mm -hmm. I think the one question I have continues with the PSAT and um, how is it marketed to parents in the eighth grade so, so that they know this is an option. So I will tell you that would be a Dr. Karen Blizzard question okay. because it's handled through her. Um, we're just putting it, we put the calendar, we put the assessments on the calendar and then I work with Libby Brown who is our representative with College Board to ensure that we have the funds to be able to afford for students to um, take the test. So Dr. Blizzard would be more um, appropriate to ask that question. Okay. Sounds good. I can tell you as a former principal in the division, it used to be marketed through counseling department. Mm -hmm. So even though, and we could absolutely go back for clarification, but it was marketed through um, the counseling department through your course schedule. So if you were in those upper level classes, then you would have the opportunity, they would probably have that conversation one-on-one, -on -one, but we wouldn't need clarification on how to get it to a broader audience. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear that. Thank you, Dr. Parker. Mm -hmm. And thank you both. No problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you've had a moment to think if you had any questions on the 10-day membership report or the construction <laughs> report. Are there any questions? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to item 5.05, .05, comments by the superintendent, Dr. Parker. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> on behalf of our entire leadership team, I thank our students, families, and staff for another successful school opening. On August 29th, we welcomed nearly 26,500 students to the new school year with lots of fanfare and lots of, and lots of smiling faces. Uh, from Christopher Newport University's athletes to the members of the police department and fire department, uh, we saw many of them out there that day, uh, local elected officials and the school board, our students and families and staff were welcomed with cheers, high fives, and chants. Uh, special thanks uh, to all of our teachers and staff for ensuring that our students had a great first day and a, verse, a great first few weeks of school. I'm looking forward to a great school year of teaching and learning this year. We'd also like to say special thanks to our students and staff who participated in the 62nd annual Denby Day Parade on Saturday. Uh, many school groups joined our high school bands in a great display of Newport News Public School pride. And thanks to the members of the school board who walked the parade route this year and greeted hundreds of spectators. September 15th through October 15th is National Hispanic Heritage Month, and the school division is recognizing the achievements and contributions of Hispanic American champions who have inspired others to achieve success. Over the next few weeks, our schools will be commemorating the observance with special events and activities, and we will share some of those on social media and our website. High school juniors and seniors and their families are invited to a financial aid workshop on Tuesday, September 27th at 6 p.m. at Warwick High School. We invite you to attend the workshop to learn more about the free application for federal student aid, grants, loans, and scholarships. For more information, visit our website or contact your school counselor. And I'm sure we will probably send a media blast out regarding that information. Newport News Public Schools is again partnering with the Health Hero Organization to provide free flu vaccinations for all students in kindergarten through 12th grade, Health Hero will conduct flu shot clinics at all of our schools October 3rd through October 6th. Parent consent forms for the free clinics were distributed to all students earlier this month and they are available on our website. Families are encouraged to review the information and register their children, contact your school nurse, or visit our website for more information on the free shot clinics. And finally, the 2021-2022 report to the community will be posted uh, on our website tomorrow. The report features student scholars and athletes, highlights of success across Newport News Public Schools from last school year, and links to video features, which are embedded into the um, document. 
In the coming days, copies of the annual report will be available at all schools, public libraries, community centers, and at grocery stores and Wawa convenience stores throughout the center, <laughs> throughout the city. <laughs> Make sure you check it out online or, or pick up a copy at some of your favorite um, locations. I'd also like to again welcome our, our student representative, Raquel, to our governance team. I'm looking forward to your leadership on the Superintendent Student Advisory Committee this year. And additionally, we look forward to any ideas that you have for supporting the voices of our students in Newport News this year. So welcome aboard. And Madam Chair, that concludes my comments for this evening. Ooh, great, thank you so much. Uh, we will move on to item six, another opportunity to hear from the public. Do we have any cards? So then we will move the agenda to matters by the school board. But just before we hear from members of the board, we would like to wish our devoted board clerk, Tiffany Moore Buffalo, a very happy birthday. We are so thankful for you and all that you do for us. Yeah. And we have a little Thank something you. for you. We'll kind of pass it down. Does it involve keys? <laughs> Would you do the honors, sure. Marvin? Not a problem. Thank you. Oh, my favorite color. Oh, my envelope is green. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, now we will have matters by the school board. Um, we'll begin with Miss Manadero. And next, John Ely. I just want to thank everybody who presented tonight. It was amazing presentations, very informative. And I'm just look for an amazing, great school year. That's all. This is Eamon. Sure. I also want to thank everyone for your presentations and um, uh, looking forward to a good year. I know the first couple of weeks are always interesting with parent drop off and pick up, but those seem to be getting smoother and traffic's mm -hmm. getting a little lighter. And I trust that uh, inside the building's getting to be uh, running smoothly too. So looking forward to a great year. Thank you. Mr. Harris. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, I would like to thank everyone that gave reports and uh, really appreciate all the information. Also, I would like to welcome and thank all of the new hires that we've had over the last couple of months, the ones that the first time here at Newport News Public School Division, and the ones that left and came back. We really appreciate you coming back. <laughs> uh, there is a shortage across America on teachers and administrators, so we value uh, what you bring to the public school system in Newport News, we really do, so thank you for that. Also, welcome uh, Madam Student, representative on the school board really looking forward to all of your wisdom uh, and I hear it um, I think it was the Naval Academy is in is in sites okay right. uh, we, we had a uh, school uh, yeah. representative mm -hmm. that went mm -hmm. to the Naval Academy mm -hmm. so um, I think it goes to show that the, the students are selecting home run hitters every time mm -hmm. I mean just what I've seen since I've been on the school board so we're gonna expect nothing less from you, okay? Appreciate you. Uh, also, I attended the Demi Day Parade, and I wanna apologize for, probably gave a lot of kids some achy <laughs> stomachs Saturday, <laughs> but we issued out a lot of candy <laughs> to grown-ups and children, so. Uh, it, it had a great feel to it. Um, being there, talking to people, it, it felt almost like a relief. Um, it was just this, nice, cool, calm uh, atmosphere, I believe. And a lot of people expressed that, you know, they they was glad to be there. They, you know, it, was, I, it just had a weird feeling to it, almost like a homecoming, you know, without all the excitement. It was more subdued, but happy at the same time. So I think the city needed that, and uh, hopefully we'll continue along those lines. And also, welcome back to all of our students. Uh, we're looking forward to all your uh, hard efforts and stay motivated. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Hunter. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Great things are happening in Newport News Public School. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I thank you for the report. Welcome um, to our new stupid rep. You know, it's glad to have an always 
pleasure to have someone that a representative, you know, for our, the voice of our students on the board. So looking forward to your comments and, you know, your leadership. And uh, again, welcome. Uh, I would like to thank uh, two people in particular. Uh, we attended, several of us attended the Urban Board Alliance Conference about a little bit over a week and a half ago. And Ms. Linda uh, Ashkew and Dr. Mitchell, Michelle Mitchell, let me tell you, they did a breakout session on the expanded mental health services for both students and staff with the center, with the creation of a wellness program. They, they couldn't get through the, they could not get through the whole presentation for the questions that were asked. It was phenomenal, and I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> uh, I believe I was heard some whispers were saying that folks from other divisions was trying to steal us. <laughs> 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 they wanna take our people. But anyway, great things that happened in Newport News, so that was really a, a showpiece we really um, showed up and showed out. So job well done. Again, welcome back to school to our, uh, our, our students here. And uh, we look forward to another exciting and positive and uh, lots of achievement this year. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Bess. Mr. Brown. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and I, too, would like to thank the staff for your reports um, tonight, some really good information, and we do appreciate all of your hard work. I had the opportunity to visit, I believe it was seven schools on the first day of school, and each one just gets better and better. The parents were excited, the students were excited, all the greeters were excited, and it was just a wonderful day. I always say it's the most wonderful time um, of the year. But I would like to thank all of the staff and those of you that are really pitching in. We do have a teacher shortage and you're kind of all over the place, but I want you to know we do appreciate you all that you do and we know that you um, do it for the students. So it is most appreciated. Um, I had an opportunity to attend the Southeast Community Festival. There was not a parade this year, but I echo what Mr. Harris said. I think people after this COVID pandemic, they were just ready to get out and be amongst people. So it was a good community type of feeling. It was, it was much smaller, but it was just wonderful to be there and see the citizens of Newport News as well. And Dr. Parker, please make sure that you give me some extra reports so that I can place some at Piggly Wiggly um, as well. So we would like to. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we appreciate the reports tonight. I just, um, don't ever want to miss the opportunity to be informed. So thank you all for taking time to, to pour into us that way. Welcome back to school and staff and teachers. Thank you for getting us through this. We appreciate it and we, um, we couldn't do it without you. Yeah, I think you have Mr. Brown. And oh, and I got, and I forgot Mr. No, I got Brown. To no, I <laughs> Mr. Brown, I apologize. <laughs> How did I manage that? You're right here on my list. Well, it's because you know I'm going to talk for 10 minutes. Why am I letting no, you know? No, you're not. Ms. No, you're not. First. Yeah, I know. I was just trying to catch her attention to say she missed one. Go ahead. I, missed I apologize. Oh, yeah. uh, no, 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 no problem. Uh, you know, I'm believing that this is going to be uh, the most enjoyable year I think that we've had in probably in recent memory and in, in memory. I'll echo what uh, Mr. Harris said. I went to the Southeast Community Day and also the Denby Day Parade. Uh, you can sense from the public and from the students and the staff uh, that we're all just very glad to be together. I know it's mm -hmm. been, uh, we've had a rough couple of years and that gratitude I think is permeating through our buildings and uh, through our people that uh, I think we're all grateful to be together and to have some time together. For uh, one, one lesson learned from the parade is either bring some more candy or I'm going to have to tell some of the parents no. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was the parents who were taking, <laughs> who were asking for candy and then we ran out of candy for the kids when we got to, <laughs> when we finally got to the last street. So uh, fu for future years I may have to tell some of the parents no so we can get to some of the kids and, and pass out the candy. But that was just a wonderful time, a wonderful day. Uh, and I really enjoyed that and I know it's been a couple of years since we've had a, the Denby Day Parade. And, and so. Uh, everyone, I think, was really excited to participate. Uh, real, I want to give a shout out uh, to the uh, Johnson Elementary Drumline that participated in both the um, Southeast Day and the Denby Day Parade. 
those kids were awesome. Awesome. So uh, I hope in, in uh, future coming months we may have a chance to honor them here at a board meeting. Uh, I got a chance to take a picture with them. Those are some real celebrities. They were they were really keeping time. Mm -hmm. We had a we you know we had a groove to uh, you know to to, to strut to uh, right behind <laughs> us as we were going down the parade. So th those kids were awesome and, and really great. Um, great to see. Great to see them participating and uh, great to see uh, them you know uh, soaring in music education, which is mm -hmm. so very important. And I'll just make my my last comment about we've got our capital budget coming up. Um, and I know that uh, we often say thank you to the staff and the one way we say, the two ways that we, I believe we say thank you is one through our operating budget and secondly through our capital budget and uh, making sure that we have uh, the facilities and uh, all the infrastructure that is needed for everyone to do their job and to do it in the best environment, best educational environment that we can possibly provide. So I made my comments tonight during our work session. I'll just, uh, I'll increase or echo some of my comments which are uh, let's be aggressive we have, uh, we've taken the time to put together a long range plan, which is an excellent long range plan. Uh, and let's make sure that we're on the aggressive side of our long range plan. So I'll continue to challenge this board. Let's continue to be aggressive because one of the, the, the way that we show the community uh, how much we care about education is the condition of our buildings. Mm -hmm. And so that's just so uh, vital and very important. And so let's make sure that we don't uh, leave anything off the table that needs to be requested. Uh, and that uh, that uh, and uh, in doing so we do our job. So I'm looking forward to a great year and uh, we'll see you all in a, in a month. Okay. And with that meeting is adjourned. All right. All right. <coughs> I said nine. <laughs>